withdrew its forces. They were a sniper spotter team. In country. You sure did, Snake. Welcome, fellow sneakering gamers, to Metal Gear Solid on the PC. It's been a few years since we've been able to enjoy this kind of excitement. And now, nearly a year later after the consoles had their version, we now get to look at what the PC can do with Hideo Kojima's epic Metal Gear Solid series. Sorry for this voice, but David Hayter couldn't make it this time, so I thought I'd do my best impression. But obviously I'm failing terribly, so I'm going to give it up. What I'm not going to give up is my love for the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Having grown up and played this game throughout the years, I absolutely adore it, and I think it sums up the whole sneaking and stealth side of a game more than any other that I've ever played. In Ground Zeroes, we go back to the 1970s playing as Big Boss, before the clone of Snake that we all knew from the PS1 Rebirth. Here we meet Schoolface. An original name aside, he is an evil villain that seems to have taken some of your comrades and kept them captive in a base. Or has he? At this point we don't really know much, other than seeing Chico that people who have played the Peace Walker game will know where that fits into the Metal Gear Solid storyline. We see this base start off with a cutscene that lasts about 12 minutes from the beginning and it's all real time. Running at 60 frames per second on the PC and the consoles as long as your machine is good enough. Here running at the full settings the PC option has you can see my 7870 isn't able to keep anywhere near a locked 60. But that's understandable because there is quite a few extra parts added into the PC version here. My 970 will most likely run this perfectly but I'm actually in the middle of building a whole new machine and I haven't got it ready for this video yet. So bear with me when I do an update on the 970 but I don't imagine this game is going to be struggling on that machine at all. Outside of the beginning start of the section, you basically work into the map where you have to then infiltrate the base, rescue Chico and anyone else that's involved in this whole storyline. I'm certainly not going to ruin that here for you by going through it, but basically it sucks you into the whole Metal Gear Solid and sets you up for what's going to happen in the Phantom Pain. And I for one am absolutely gagging to play that game. Um, there's certainly a few good cutscenes and Hideo Kojima has his style in there as always. What is epic about Hideo Kojima's style is the AI and the characters in the game. It's all been advanced over from the original classic Metal Gear Solid 2. Characters as you see here can be injured and then wait for a few seconds before still trying to shoot you with a handgun. They can be shot in the legs, they retreat. The AI works brilliantly. You've got physics of characters as they fall and their bodies get touched and kicked around. You've got lots of explosions as you throw throughout the base and you can sneak in or just go gung-ho like here on certain missions and just try and shoot everyone. And that's what I love about the game. It just gives you choice. People say the game is open world, it's not open world, it's open level design and that's what's great about this kind of game. I'm looking forward to this being a big change this generation of completely open level design, as we saw the latest Uncharted demo. I don't need a big free running game where I can go everywhere and do anything, but a massive open level design that allows me to choose my path and it at least react to things as they happen. If I get spotted, I can then go into Rambo mode and see if I can survive. If not, I can then sneak through and no one can find me. This is bolstered even further by having different options of weapons, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and basically choice. You can play each level and mission as you want to. And it means that even when you're playing the same missions at different times of day and all that kind of stuff, it makes a difference because nothing plays out identical. 
The AI in the game is very clever. They'll flank you, they'll work towards you. If you take one out, they'll radio each other and tell people that you're missing or the camera's been taken down. So you've got to be very, very careful how you play the game. It's not like most games where you just kill one guy, no one cares about it, and everyone carries on their own way. They all seem to have a reaction, but it's something that, that Kojima and his team have done since the Metal Gear Solid 2 days. And here in Ground Zeroes, it seems to have gone one step further. Aside from the main mission, you've got obviously these side missions you can also choose through. And you unlock these as you go through. And they make a difference, but they all play out in this one same camp. But you've got different times of day, be it morning, noon, night, and obviously rain. And sufficiently extends the playtime. Now you can finish the original story very, very quickly. But the whole point of this game is not to go charging through and be gung-ho, but be sneaky, be stealthy. Work through it at a slow pace and work out how you want to play. And then if you play it that way, you get great satisfaction from actually infiltrating the base, killing everyone or taking them all down and not being seen by anybody and not looking back. If you get spotted, you can quickly react, take some headshot and prevent it from turning into a full-blown disaster, which I absolutely love. And it gives you, again, more choice and gives you the option to react if things go slightly peak tong. or even knocking him out with a tranquilizer dart and moving on. When you get the grasp of Snake and his control system, you end up feeling just like a total and utter ruthless mercenary that Snake actually is. And that's the great part about this game. Yes, it's not hours and hours of content, but it is an appetizer for what will be a stupendous story that we can play through in The Phantom Pain. Here, comparing the PC to PS4 version, there's not a huge difference. If you look on the left, you can see the pop-in on the PS4 version, which was reasonably bad in quite a lot of places. But if we look at the PC version running on the high setting, it doesn't look that much better. Um, and this is something that's a bit odd. See this bush here on high? As we walk towards it, it pops in a few feet away from Snake's feet. Now on the PS4 version, it's just a few feet nearer that it pops into view here. And this is high to PS4. Now if we look at this in a little bit more detail, as we run towards the distance in the background where I've circled it, watch the objects and all the grass load in and pop in, the bushes, the background signs, they all pop in a few feet away from Snake. But if we go to the PC version on high, you can see they pop in just that little bit further away. But it's not a huge difference, but it is slightly better. What is strange, if you go from low to high on PC, it makes absolutely no difference at all. Low, medium and high pretty much have the same amount of LOD drawing as you see here. As I slow it down, look at all three versions, you can see the drawing is about the same. Certainly not a difference there that you would notice. So at this point I would say that this kind of gives us signs of where the engine is. You can see on extra high here, it basically doesn't have a LOD, it just draws in the sign image at the end. But all the bushes, trees and grass all stay static. Once we go to the cutscenes, you can see the certain changes that have been done, or at least the post-processing changes that have been done. Here from the PS4, we go to the PC. You can't really see a huge difference there as I fade, other than obviously the frame rate dips down on the highest setting on PC. But look at the DOF effect in the background from the PC to the PS4. You can see it's far subtler on the PS4, with the PC version having a stronger coverage. Outside of this difference, the motion blur seems slightly pared back as well in places. This seems strong on the Xbox One and the PS4 originally. And it adds to the point where I think the engine is still in flux. With a basically 12 months more development time, I think some of these benefits that are in the PC version, not all of them mind, I think some of these will make an appearance on console when the Phantom Pain launches next year. Certainly the LOD, I think, will be changed from the original version here. That would have been a quick win to keep the solid target of 60 FPS on both consoles. And I assume also the Bokka DOF effect will be improved up to the level you see here, which although great, is not to the level of what's running in Advanced Warfare which is probably the best version I've seen in any game for Doff, Bokka and certainly Motion Blur. But again, 12 months or thereabouts, so these are the kind of benefits you'll see in the Phantom Pain and certainly a lot more. One of the big benefits you can clearly see on the PC version here is the light sources and also the, the actual LOD detail. Look here as I go back to the PS4, it does look heavily paired back with less dynamic light sources. Again, the shadows on the PS4 look to be running the medium setting that the PC does. You can see here as we go to the, um, the medium settings there on PC, they're pretty much identical with the low setting as you see here being really a light version of the shadows, but certainly serviceable for a fast-paced action game like Metal Gear Solid. The absolute highest level shadows, extra high that runs on PC, do look very detailed and very deep. But as you can see in the top left hand corner, come at a price. And on my 7870, 
it basically slashes the frame rate in half if you go nothing else but go from a 60 frames per second presentation down to this this is what happens the other feature that's completely missing from consoles is screen space reflection this is handled with the screen filtering when you put on extra high that turns on on high it's turned off here you can see the reflection of the, the character and the box whereas on the ps4 version you get nothing at all or even specular maps and again it highlights where the engine was when this game launched and some of the features that were missing and weren't even ready to be implemented at the time Time. Again, these are the kind of things that I think will be implemented in the Phantom Pain. And in fact, you can see it in the latest trailer with some of the blood shots when he shoots the guys in the head at the end. Outside of this, the texture quality and the specular reflections all look identical across PC and PS4 on the highest setting. Now, I think the extra high setting of textures just adds a little bit more mipmap detail. But again, it's all over the place and I can't find anywhere that's any different. So if extra high does have better quality textures than the consoles, I can't notice it. And I don't think anyone else will either. Overall, the game is quality, it's exactly what you'd expect from Metal Gear Solid Adventure, and at around £10, it's hardly going to break the bank. It uses the CPU cores quite effectively on PC, and overall, it's a very good PC version. It uses around six cores, as you see in the top left-hand side, when you run it on the highest level settings, but as you see here on this machine, that is not going to be possible if you want to get anywhere near the 60 FPS. It just dips too much when you're running on the high level settings. This is not even high shadows at this point, because the machine just struggles like buggery to run on. Um, it is a very good version with lots of options. Some of them are mixed in with the other options, like I say, the screen filtering and AA are all mixed into that. There's no single option for AA. But I don't think anyone's going to be unhappy. And in the spate of some of the recent games like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, it doesn't have a feel of juddering, stuttering. Even on a 2 gig card, it runs perfectly fine. If you have a machine around the 270X or the 760 with a decent CPU mark, then you would get pretty much the same settings as PS4 at the same 60 FPS with a few dips here and there, but it's not going to make a big difference, and it's certainly an enjoyable game. Like I say, it's not the longest game in the world, and there isn't a diversity in all of the maps. It literally is this one, different time of day, and then away you go. Obviously, the PC version also has the dynamic uh, weather system that the PS4 version had, which wasn't available on the Xbox One or the last-gen consoles. And again, that's quite nice because you get the cloud cover effect, which is similar to what you see in Assassin's Creed Unity if anyone's played it. The game is, a, as I say, a perfect appetizer for what we can look forward to from the Phantom Pain. And that is certainly something that I cannot wait to get my hands on and play. I'm very impressed with how Hideo Kojima and his team have handled the PC version. It has a lot of love, care and attention. It's not something that's just been chucked on. And that makes sense because the Fox engine was first and foremost designed on the PC. So it is a very good engine and it looks to be delivering exactly what we expect from a new generation of games. And I really do commend Hideo for sticking to the 60 FPS target while still delivering superb visuals and a great, great lighting engine, which is very impressive. I could certainly waste around £10 on a lot worse things than this. As always, if you enjoyed this or any of my other content, then please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate each and every one of you that does. Leave your thoughts and feedbacks below. You guys and girls take care, and I won't keep you waiting as long on the next one. Okay, now use your iDroid to call the chopper for pickup.